Hello world and welcome to Elevated Intuition. Today we are looking at what makes you so attractive. So I have three piles to choose from here. This is a pick a card reading. So that's, you get to pick the number, the pile, um, or I'm gonna place objects here in a moment that resonates with you. You use your intuition to do that. And then in the description down below, I have timestamps. You go down there, click on your um, your group and then I use my intuition to read the cards for you uh, also if none of these float your boat I uh, in the description I have other what make you attractive readings um, or I have more choices to choose from and you know you go with your intuition you you use your discernment that's what we're really big on here is developing that discernment developing your intuition and going with that gut feeling i feel like that's really important and something that is being lost actually um so we're getting that's the first step to being so attractive is using your um intuition and a, a, a dis discernment so if you like to pick with objects for, I'm going to place those right now. And for group number one, the object is a pink moonstone. These are, I'm going to do all palm stones um, today. So pink moonstone, and this is a panda deck. And for group number two, the object is a labdorite. And I just want to like there's this beautiful flash that happens in Labdorite. Um, pink and, uh, or not pink, not pink, um, yellow and blue flash on this one. So you can kind of see it glisten in the light there. And then this deck is Mystic Melodies. It's a vintage kind of cartoon looking deck. And for group number three, we have, this is um, Blue Calcite. And then this deck is the Muse Tarot. So if you're still not sure which to pick, go ahead and take do this breathing exercise with me. I'm just gonna go ahead and close my eyes and take a deep breath in and release. And then we're gonna set the intention that you get the messages that you need to hear. Go ahead and take another deep breath in and release. Open your eyes. Wherever your eyes are drawn, that is the group for you. Thanks for being here, and I will meet you at your reading. Hello, group one. This is Pink Moonstone. This is the number one, and this is the Panda deck. So welcome to your reading. So the first card that actually came out for you is this one. We'll get to this deck here in a second. And it is Chaos and Conflict very interesting. So um, a couple things here and some of them don't necessarily fit together. So some of this might be, um, I, I'm, I'm getting a couple things. First of all, um, Gemini, you might be a Gemini, you might have some Gemini in your chart, I'm seeing a lot of like, maybe some duality, maybe some putting on some faces, or at least that type of energy. Um, Geminis can often be chameleons, but I'm seeing this here, where you kind of match somebody else's energy, you're not necessarily ready to let other people see the real you, see who you are, and you might hide that, and you might be a little bit guarded. So the... Um, the persona or what you put out there is might be a little bit different than who you really are inside. I just, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of times we get into situations where we want to put forth a, a specific energy, whether that is to protect ourselves and you might need to protect yourself if you are um, somebody who identifies as like a, an empath. You know, you want to match somebody else's energy rather than um, have their energy impact you. But the reason I'm getting that uh, with the chaos and conflict is um, we have this beautiful zebra who is putting on like the clothing or the persona um, of a giraffe. And, but underneath, the zebra is the zebra. So it's important for you to remember who you are and remember your power. And, you know, sometimes it is fun to kind of dress up um, for an occasion. <laughs> 
dress up with a persona for an occasion and kind of figure out the landscape before you're ready to let people know who the real you is. But once you let somebody in, like that is something very special. And um, and I don't feel like everybody gets that. Everybody, Not everybody gets to see the real beautiful you and that's okay. Um, you protect you. Um, chaos and conflict. The other other kind of message that I'm getting is you might be an instigator. You might like to push buttons. Um, you might want to uh, kind of put out the energy. I feel like it's a little bit more playful. Um, other people may not see it that way, but that's okay. <laughs> and I also feel like you um, thrive in chaos and conflict. You, you're like, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, those are some uh, chaos and conflict are, are uh, well, I think that the way you get, you navigate or you get through chaos and conflict is to kind of like be a little bit slippery and, and put up those barriers, maybe make jokes about things. I think humor is something that, um, is you, but I feel like there are a lot of people who would say that they know you, but they, they would know like different versions of you. Again, that's okay. You be you, you do you. Um, but I feel like you know, as long as you are in touch with who you are underneath and um, who you want to be. And we get the Eight of Pentacles, we get the Hanged Panda, we get the Ten of Cups, and then we get the Knight of Cups. So the, what, um, I don't like to read, um, they're all reversed. And I don't like to read spreads that are all reversed. And in fact, that's a hard and fast rule that I don't. But it does give me a little bit of information here when they do come in, in reverse. Because I feel like sometimes when you put on personas that, because remember I said, that's okay as long as you know the real you. Um, sometimes we get lost in that. So I think that discovering the real you is, it could be really powerful and really important. And I also feel like the whole like idea of personas or um, putting that out there is, is kind of get, getting like a fake it until you make it kind of vibe here as well. And it's not that I mean, there's nothing wrong with um, like channeling an energy or channeling another person or channeling um, an energy that you have um, made up so that you can get a job done. And w what I'm thinking of or what's coming in here when we're talking about this is Beyonce. Um, and, and actually, there's a lot of people who create, especially in the entertainment industry, who create a persona because it, at heart, Beyonce is very quiet and shy, but on stage, she's not. And she created a persona that she named Sasha Fierce. And she gave Sasha Fierce like this energy of being a great entertainer and a great dancer. And, and that's how she was able to go out there and perform the way that she performs. Um, whatever you feel about Beyonce, she is a great performer and we can't take that away from her. Uh, you know, there's just certain things about uh, celebrities sometimes that uh, people don't like or really, really do like. But, um, but then again, like with that, nobody really knows the real them, do they? Not really. So... Um, I just feel like you have some blocked energy around your confidence. So that's why I turned all of these upright because we have the eight of pentacles. Um, I feel like uh, what the advice that needs to come through here and what makes you so attractive, I know this is an attractive thing and then we get some work advice here, is um, you know, spend some time on that uh, persona that you, you want to project and who you want to be and then how you can then step into that because Beyonce no longer uses Sasha Fierce. She just is. She has just become who she wants to be. Um, and the reason why is, like I said, like she decided who this persona was going to be. She channeled that energy. She stepped into the energy and then she became it herself. Where when you're just going into situations and trying to match somebody else's energy or the energy of the room, you don't really have control over who you are and, and, and kind of, you know, it, it can become chaotic. So in all of these cards here is about you like pushing forward and becoming that person who you want to be, um, both inside and out outwards um, <clears throat> and not being afraid to, to be who you are 
We have the Eight of Pentacles here. This is about working. So work situations, I even mentioned that, I think, when you start a new job or um, at, as an example, like you don't really know how your work people are going to be or how they're going to take you. So you put up a boundary between you and them um, bef before you allow them to see who you really are. The Haynes Panda. This is funny because <clears throat> upright it looks like it it's upright because the the panda is hanging upside down so this is just um taking a break taking a breather sometimes from this chaos and conflict and really knowing the real you because like i said it's you are very worthwhile in knowing and then the ten of cups and the knight of cups is going out and getting exactly what you want and being the exact person that you want because i feel like um you can get pulled apart here if you're not in control of how you are presenting yourself and how you want to be and you know who you are. And we don't want that for you. We don't want to get pulled apart. We want you to be who you are while the chaos um, and conflict comes in around you and then you carry on confidently because you know who you are, the people around you know who you are and they love you um, and you, you know, this, this Knight of Cups goes out and really is in search of, of that love and projecting that love. And <clears throat> he can go out or she can go out and find that love because fully embodied and embraced in love, if that makes sense. But I think what's important here for you is that you just embrace who you are. Um, there and, and step up in confidence, okay? Um, let's get some more cards out here. These are angel cards, and let's see what makes our group number one so attractive. Relationship harmony that goes along here with these cups cards, and yes, so beautiful. Um, yeah, just this confidence that needs to, to come through. Um, I think that music is also uh, something that's really important to you, especially when we come out with this relationship harmony. We have the angels uh, with this, this music. Harmony not only is, you know, about being in touch with, with the music that is around us, but also uh, the people. Who are around us and not being afraid to you know play your own tune and be your own self um, and then the yes so <laughs> I love the yes it is kind of like vague it's just kind of like yes just be you and this co confidence again it comes through I love that we have a lot of butterflies especially over here because we have a certain sort of transformation so I feel like this conversation that we're having is really important um, for you in that uh and this also is interesting that it's a shadow because it's almost like a projection here. Again, kind of going back to what I said about the chaos and, and conflict, um, putting up that um, barrier between other people. Again, totally fine, um, especially when you're in a situation where, y you know, you need to protect yourself and do that. I kind of feel like I, I hinted when you might identify as somebody who is an empath, um, putting out this kind of like uh, character um, or about, you know, persona necessarily and allowing people to attack that. And you're like, yeah, that doesn't really matter because this is who I am. Um, ultimately, I feel like the chaos, like you put a harmony and order to it. You're able to. And um, there's a recognition here that needs to happen within yourself and in your own confidence that like, yes, I can do that. I am that. I embody that. Um, I don't think I spent enough time here on the Eight of Pentacles. It's coming up again. That I want you to know that at work, other people see you as somebody who is very competent and and maybe not as confident in your skills as you should be. 
but they definitely see you as competent and you're able to handle the job and really kind of putting an order to the chaos. Um, and just really seeing like the difference between the eight of pentacles here and the the hanged panda where we've got like these fireflies here um, that are kind of flying around in, in any in every direction. Um, sometimes you may need to sit still and study things, um, question, um, look at things from another perspective. Don't get stuck in this perspective of your nose to the grindstone because that is where you'll be able to see yourself and really project um, with love into the future of what you really want to do and what you want to accomplish. And that's why I think this, this yes is comes over here. And that's why I think that initially these cards were in reverse because we need to really, the thing that you need to work on is this confidence in yourself. You don't have to change things. It's just a basic, it's an underlying shift that needs to happen. Um, and real, the realization here of how, like um, beautiful and wonderful you really are. And I do feel like the people who get to see you um, know that and they glimpse it and they want to be around you and they get this warm and fuzzy feeling and they really see you as somebody who values other people um, once once somebody is, is safe and they do feel special once you let them in. So that's what I have for you, group one. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group two. This is the Labdorite Palm Stone. I never get tired of looking at that flash that happens. Um, the number two, and then we've got our Mystical Medleys group. But the first card is this one that comes out for you and Thinker. So to the question of what makes you so attractive, Thinker, it looks like you sit down and maybe think things through. <laughs> um, I'm getting this kind of like resistance to impulsivity. I don't think that you necessarily sit on the sidelines of things and you know, I, I think you just, your mind works very quickly um, and you're very cerebral. You might be an air sign or have a lot of air signs in your chart. Um, I don't think that you're worried about going along with the group, especially when the group um, is full of people who just knee jerk reaction and do something and you're like, wait, wait, wait a second. What about this though? Um, I think you're the person who points those types of things out. Um, and they're like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, um, but I, you might, or might be a little bit quieter about things as well and, um, maybe not want to get into, uh, conflicts over things, but, um, people see you as somebody who, uh, is a deep thinker and looks, has a different perspective on things. And that is a strength. Uh, most people do not. Most people go along with what they think the crowd is doing. Um, what else about number two can you tell us? Okay, three of pentacles. We get five of cups. I think there's a little bit more of that thinking vibe going on here in the five of cups. We've got the seven of swords reversed. I think you're somebody who works with integrity. Um, and you are very serious about the job that you do. And then the higher fan, you go your own way. You have your own direction. You're not <clears throat> concerned with following the crowd or what's conventional. Um, if what's, I mean, you'll do what's conventional, but not because it's conventional. You'll do it because you've made your own mind up about it and you've made your own decision about it. So we have three of pentacles, five of cups. We've got the seven of swords reversed, and then we've got the hierophant reversed. So when I'm talking about the hierophant reverse is when I'm talking about like going along with the crowd, because that would be convention. That would be society, what society thinks, what society wants. Um, I don't feel like, you know, you're necessarily starstruck by people. Um, you see the value in people of all levels, um, whether they're a leader of some sort or a celebrity or like, 
I think you you might be somebody who, I, I haven't used this description before, but it's coming up again, um, where if you go to a party, like you would make friends with, some, with the dog rather than try to um, network or, you know, ooh, that's the smartest person in the room. I need to go talk to them. Probably because you're the smartest person in the room, but you don't necessarily need to let everybody know that. They can discover that on their own. Three of Pentacles, though, you know, you like working with other people. Um, I think, you know, you bring a lot of planning to a, a, something. You help people. Um, and I don't think you're pushy about it, but I think that, you know, if you're in a setting when you're working with other people and they, everybody has different ideas on how to accomplish something. When you say something, other people are very um, receptive to it because it makes sense. Like you have also a way of being able to put your ideas out there and let other people understand them. You might go above and beyond sometimes at work. Like you might want to make a manual, um, uh, like a standard operating procedure. I feel like you would be somebody who would um, look at like the end goal and go, okay, we need to do this step, this step, this step, this step, this step. I feel like the five of cups, sometimes you get lost in the past. Uh, nostalgia looking backwards um, where this is good is like you a lot of people move on from something and you will like look at the goal the situation and be like okay um, we were here we got here these are the good things these are the bad things and you look back um, with the intent of making things better next time around but that's part of this whole thinker thing, um, this whole, uh, you know, very cerebral and, and looking at, um, I, you know, what's going on and, and the project and the all around, like everything. Uh, Seven of Swords Reverse, this is where I was talking about you doing it with integrity. I don't think that you're somebody who would, um, go behind other people's backs because that's kind of what the Seven of Swords does. The Seven of Swords does things for, um, their own good like they're sneaking off they're sneaking out you're not a very sneaky person the only reason somebody might think you're sneaky is because I think you're quiet I don't think that you have to like let everybody know all of these things um, but if somebody were to talk to you you would you definitely let them know what's going on um, it but you don't have to let everybody know all of your business I don't think you're somebody you know you're not somebody who gossips um, you're probably not somebody who values that um, who looks into that or who wants that um, kind of thing I'm laughing because you know th like the real housewives is 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 not on your list of things to watch um, you want to watch and you want to see and you want to consume people who are being innovative. Um, and then you compare yourself to those things. I don't think that there's like, you know, a lot of people will look at somebody else and go, wow, you know, they're, they're pretty amazing. Um, and this kind of goes with that starstruck thing. I don't think that, you know, I think you have a lot of uh, talents and maybe hidden talents uh, where you look at somebody who accomplishes something and you're like, ah, I could do that too. <laughs> because you can break it down and um, really see that, you know, see what they're doing, see the breakdown of it, see it in your head and, um, and figure it out. A reverse engineer comes to mind. Uh, you look at some, yeah, the five of cups kind of with the thinker card, you know, this whole thing, reverse engineer something. Somebody can bring you something and you can like pick it apart and pull it out and figure out how, how it's done. But again, like, um, and, and maybe to your detriment sometimes the seven of swords, like with integrity, like you have a very, um, like you have a code of contact, conduct. Um, which is great, but sometimes like, you know, for instance, let's say you're not necessarily happy at your job. Um, there are people who would go on interviews and wouldn't say that would be, even though you would, that would be ha it would be difficult for you to do. You don't want to, you don't want to like let people down. I think you would rather quit your job 
and then look for a job, then tell other people that you're, or, or um, go behind somebody else's back about uh, interviewing. Um, I think you're, it seems like you're kind of like maybe a one step at a time, like this is, but this is what you do. Um, you certainly would, you know, end a relationship before getting into another one, uh, for sure. Let's see what else we have here for our group two. What else can you tell us about group two? What makes group two so special? What makes group two so attractive? <laughs> okay, they'll come out anyway. Um, honor how far you have come. I love that. So I think that, you know, I think you do look back at things, but not necessarily in the most positive of light. Um, so just be careful with that. Um, honor how far you've come, how much work that you actually have put into it. I think sometimes you overlook how much work goes into something because sometimes these things are kind of easy for you. But I want you to appreciate who you are. I want you to appreciate the um, changes that you've gone through to be where you are. Um, sometimes this kind of energy kind of came through in number one too, where you get so stuck in work or you're so stuck with the nose to the grindstone that you don't see the progress or the changes that you have made. This would also be like if you are... Um, you know, yeah, of course, a work situation, but if you have other personal body goals, for instance, that, you know, you sometimes I think that you don't hit your ideal and you almost, um, almost throw everything out because you're not at your ideal instead of recognizing, like, for instance, you wanted to lose like 20 pounds, but you lost 15, but you're upset at that other five more than you are at the 15 that you have lost. So there's a certain amount of like looking on the bright side that I think would be beneficial for you group two, um, because you do actually, I think you have very high standards and um, possibly a perfectionist as well. So that's hard for perfectionists to do that to see how far that they have come. And then we have open your psychic senses. Very interesting here too. Interesting that we've got like the wings, um, we've got this, well, this is an angel deck, so I'm not so surprised there, but this looks like a fairy. Um, so even, you know, definitely go within. I love that she has this kind of like, um, a thing that's lighting up over her heart, but because you're so like cerebral, I think that it would be easy for you to open up your crown chakra, um, your third eye chakra. I, you know, and it's funny because I think there's a certain practicality about you. And I think that when you see things coming, it's because you see, you recognize patterns. You have like that natural progression rather than, and somebody would say, wow, how'd you know that was going to happen? You know, you're psychic. And you're like, no, I could just read patterns. I know it's going to happen because, you know, it's the most likely scenario of what's going to happen. So I find that really interesting too, that it says like open up your psychic senses. I feel like these two cards are very much about um, reminding you how special that some of the things that you do are. Because I don't think, I feel like um, a lot of times you're just kind of like very even keel about stuff. And you know, you're not like, you don't always celebrate your wins or you celebrate who you are just because it's like, well, that's what I expected to happen. That's what I knew was going to happen. <laughs> so why would I celebrate it? Um, but these cards are just want to remind you because I feel like you need to, to feel a little bit more joy going on in your life, especially with the five of cups. The five of cups is kind of like, um, sometimes we get too fixated on the past or too fixated on these three cups that have spilled out and don't recognize or realize the two beautiful cups coming in, uh, in for us. And even though life doesn't necessarily surprise you so much because you think about it and you see what's happened in the past and you recognize patterns and you know, what's likely to happen in the future. Um, that's not a skill that everybody else has. 
you should re at least recognize that and recognize your own uniqueness in that way. So that's what I have for you, group two. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thanks for spending some time here with me. Appreciate it. And I will see you in the next reading. Hello, group three. This is the blue calcite group, um, also the Muse Tarot and the number three. You are in the right place if you picked any of those. So my camera, I had some technical difficulties, so I'm kind of redoing this. So the set might look different in a moment. So just forgive me for that. Um, but this is such an important message, such an important card that I wanted to make sure that I <laughs> explored everything around it. Um, 42 chop wood. So we will get to the chop wood part here in a moment. But when I see 42, and it's definitely always prominent on this particular card, a couple of things. First of all, 42, Douglas Adams, he wrote um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 42 is the number of life, the universe, and everything. I think it's kind of funny that it is on this chop wood card because um, in that book, they're you know they built this supercomputer to figure out what the meaning of life is, and it kicks out the number 42, and it's such a mundane answer. And so it's kind of chop wood. It's kind of such a mundane answer, but yet it's so like. Yeah, it's just the little things. It's the little things that are important um, and magnificent and to make the most of every moment. So when we're asking the question of what makes you so attractive, it's that making the most of every moment and um, kind of just being there, kind of showing up. And the other thing with 42, there was a movie uh, with Chad Mc Chadwick Boseman. You probably heard of Chadwick Boseman. Um, he was... Black Panther. Unfortunately, he passed away, but he was in this movie 42. Highly suggest you check it out if you've not seen it, where he played Jackie Robinson, whose number was 42. So hence the, the name. So there's a certain amount of um, just letting your talents shine um, and doing the little things day by day um, that they add up and they become legendary, basically. Um, fundamentals also comes comes into mind fundamentals here. And chop wood, that even that parable, it's chop wood and carry water. Um, that even goes back to the fundamentals. And it's a story about a guy who um, he goes to this monastery, he goes to these monks, and he wants to find enlightenment, he's seeking enlightenment. And of course, he's new there, he's the newbie. So they have him chopping wood, carrying water, they have him doing all the chores, and all the monks are meditating. And he's like, Okay, but what will I do? Once I find enlightenment? What will I do once I find enlightenment? And their answer is you're going to chop wood and carry water. It's the small things, it's the little things, it's the detail things, those types of things that um, add up that mean something that um, are make up our life. So very much about being grounded. Um, you might be an earth sign um, or have a lot of earth signs in your earth energy in your chart. A very practical energy, a very much about you know, doing the mundane things, like the mundane things, like they're mundane, but they're what really make a difference in our lives, whether we have, you know, a clean home or not. Like, um, I feel like this is something, either a reminder or just, you know, doing those small things make a big difference. It also talks about taking small steps, practical steps, um, being practical, being grounded, doing the little things. Um, that are are what re are really important in life. So what else can we tell us about group three? Um, and it might be, I think also there's a level of maturity here. You might be somebody who has been called an old soul. Um, you might be somebody who, but you're not afraid to go into new directions either. Um, Let's see, what else do we get? We get the devil and page of materials. Um, that's where I was saying, like, you're not afraid to go into new, but it's still materials. It's still very, very grounded strength and nine of materials. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, a lot of earth energy 
the page of materials and the nine of materials. We have the devil card and we have the strength card. Both of these are major arcana cards. Both of these are major, major energies. I feel like maybe sometimes you need to be grounded because you understand what happens when you're not grounded. Um, like you're very much in control of yourself. The devil card comes out as somebody, I mean, the devil card is about having attachments. It's about having, um, it, it can be about uh, like having maybe an addictive personality and you understand like I feel like there's some experience here, especially with the strength card. The strength reminds us to have power over our own mind. And then both, all of these cards here are very much about that being grounded and creating and creating the, the life and the dreams that you want. And I feel like you have worked very, very hard to do that. The devil, you know, there's a level of ambition behind this devil, um, but it can be, it can get out of control. It can be uh, too much. And again, with like that addictive personality, if you, if you're like a gambler or you're like, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with these little, these things taken in, um, uh, small increments, but anything in excess can be really bad. So sometimes this, this devil card can come out when, when things aren't that great, when we have those attachments, um, that are really kind of holding us back. But all of the rest of this just kind of like lets, lets me think that, or lets me know here that, you know, having a certain level of a detachment to something is great because when, when it is um, persistent, uh, that you hold it in a way, you know, in a very positive way to help you accomplish your goals, to help you push forward, to help you be the person that you are meant to be. So I love the combination of the devil and strength here for you because strength is like, it, it, it doesn't have to be um, overwhelming strength. It's just kind of almost this like passive strength, this um, confidence, this level of knowing, this um, you understand that there's chaos going on, but you use it to create, you use it to um, grow, to bloom, to um, I'm getting like this idea of a material girl um, living in a material world here, but you can be a material guy as well. <laughs> you don't have to be a material, all material girl, but um, just because of the nine of materials and the, the female, he's usually a female on here. There's a lot of um, individuality here as well. Like all of these cards speak to you know, you persisting, you doing this. And I feel like um, maybe you don't give yourself enough credit for your ambition, credit for the things that you create. Because there's a lot of creative energy here. There's a lot of like visualizing and materializing it. Um, a lot of manifestation energy. This nine of materials is so powerful. Um, and uh, it does, However, the Nine of Materials is kind of like a, a pause and reflect and appreciate who you are and where you've come from and what you've done. Um, there is a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of hard work here. You're somebody who does, isn't afraid to put in that work. Um, again, with that very grounded energy and the strength and the, the like, I mean, it, of the suits, the materials are the kind of like the slowest moving here, and that is kind of echoed with the the chop wood. Um, so yes, you have an idea, you have your ambition, you have this um, thought, this goal, this m in mind of of what you want and where you want to go, and then you're just like making your own luck. You're making it and pushing it through, and um, through kind of like your sure sheer strength and your sheer will. Um, your hardest critic is probably your own mind. That might be why you like to keep yourself busy with small tasks. Um, you're, and you would be somebody who like, you know, you know that your neighbor just had a new baby. So you take your neighbor, um, food or you're available to help the help them out with yard work or things like that um, so people appreciate you in that way too very practical very very grounded and I'm just gonna get two more cards here to 
We get personal development. So yeah, that ambition and that um, walking through kind of like this portal here. Uh, oh, look at this. And then being of service. Very, yeah. <laughs> so I got right right before I, this card pulled out, like I was saying, like you would be somebody who would notice that your neighbor needed help. And so you would um, pick up and help them out. And I, you know, you were a very wonderful person to know. Um, I think you're very inspiring to other people too, in the way you did it. However, I bet you do get a lot of people when, I know I, I use this term, but I think everybody can understand it. Um, like you lose, you lose weight, right? And people are like, well, how did you do it? And you're like, diet and exercise. <laughs> so even though you're inspiring, like you're very like, yes, that's, that's, but that's how I did it. Diet and exercise. No, but seriously, how, how did you do it? And you're very matter of fact and, t and tell other people or somebody would be like, um, I've done everything and I can't lose. And you're like, except for diet and exercise. <laughs> because they, they want to try these pills or they want to try, to try fasting or they want to do, you know, but they don't, they're not really paying attention to what they're, they're eating or doing, or maybe they're just cutting one meal out or, but they still have all those snacks. Anyway, getting off on that tangent there. So personal development, really important to you. Being of service, really important to you. Being a very practical down to earth person is really what I'm getting here um, from this reading. And that is not boring. Um, I, can, I think maybe you wanted to, to see something interesting here and maybe you didn't. And it's, it's like, gosh, you know how many people can't do what you do? It's, it's amazing. So just continue to be who you are um, because you very much, I think sometimes we want to be of service. I was going to say you're very much appreciated However, I think you're underappreciated as well. I know that sounds, yeah. But I feel like sometimes you're, you, you're so much of service that you will help other people and they don't even realize that you're helping them or they didn't ask, so they don't necessarily appreciate it. Um, I, but I think that's just something in your character and you're like, well, that's just the right thing to do, so you do it. So that's what I have for you, group three. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I will see you in the next reading.